everybody. My name is John Sievers again with another episode of Roadside Reviews, number seven to be exact, and boy, do we have a treat today. Behind me is the all new 2021 Kia Stinger. This is the GT line. And this vehicle was first introduced back in 2018 as a GT model for the Kia lineup. Sports, uh, sports sedan with a hint of luxury and that has really kind of changed and evolved over the last couple years to not only a phenomenal driver's car, but also a very luxurious car as well at a fraction of the cost of what you'd see other vehicles out on the market that are gonna have comparable equipment. Now, being a GT car, you still do have your full four doors and also a rear hatch instead of a trunk. And we'll be going over that when we get towards the back of the vehicle. But the one thing that's really gonna be able to set this car apart that makes it so much fun to drive, it's gonna be the power plant underneath the hood. So let's take a look at that first. Now you do have two different options as far as your motors, and this one is equipped with the four-cylinder turbocharged engine mated with an eight-speed automatic transmission. This has plenty of power to be able to get up and go. And you know, compared to some of the other cars that have the 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, let's say in some of the smaller sedans or even some of our sister companies like the Hyundai Sonata that we had covered before in the last episode, this just gives it a little bit more grunt. The biggest thing too that you see with this is being a real driver's car, rear wheel drive. Now all wheel drive is optional and it's a great thing if you live up north where there's a lot of snow and ice and things like that. But you know, down here, South Texas, you wanna have a little bit more fun. This is still one of the few remaining rear wheel drive sports sedans that you can be able to get out on the market. Popping the hood, you can be able to see everything's very easy to be able to find, very cleanly laid out. Let's talk about you know, some of the performance features with this. One is gonna be, you see these strut tower braces? Those aren't there just for cosmetics, those actually serve a purpose. So by mounting from the front suspension to the subframe at the front of the car, that's gonna reduce a lot of the flexing and twisting in the uh, body of the vehicle, which is gonna help with structural rigidity, which means that you're gonna get less lean, less vibration, less shaking, especially over time. You know, you don't want those squeaks and rattles to kind of come out. But when you wanna be able to push this car to its limits and be able to drive it like a true GT car, this is what's gonna be able to help make sure that you stay on the road on a flat and level pace. Besides that, things like your engine oil, being able to find your battery terminals, and all your fluids, still super easy. We've touched on that before, so I'm not gonna really repeat it. Just know it's the same way across with the whole Kia line. Now, closing the hood, we take a step back. Very aggressive front end. I mean, very aggressive. And there's really nothing on the front that is just here for looks. Everything really serves a purpose. Everything from the honeycomb grill to your lower air vents for your transmission coolers, engine coolers, and intercoolers for your turbo systems, even to these side air vents, which then redirect air around to be able to help cool off the front brakes and improve aerodynamics and stability as well. So not only do you get the aerodynamics for the performance part, but then also for fuel, uh, fuel savings as well. And we talk about the headlights. This is one of the few cars you still see where it has the all-in-one combos. Everything from your turn signals to your projector, LED headlamps and high beams, all in one piece. And for this vehicle, it really, really works well. Ties everything in. You don't wanna be able to have a super crowded front end to where there's things scattered all over the place. Very simple, very aggressive really matches the styling of this car, which separates it from all the other cars in the Kia lineup. Coming over to the side too, this GT line does have Bridgestone Potenza tires, all season, all weather like we talked about before. The Bridgestone Potenza being the high performance tire from Bridgestone. So you still get that comfortable ride, great feel, but then tons of traction. And it's gonna be as responsive as possible. So if you're going through those twisty corners, you'll still be able to make sure you have tons of grip and stability while driving the car. Now this GT line does have these optional five spoke wheels. You can see that you still have the machine finish with the dark gray inlays on it, which add that nice two-tone effect. And then of course that traditional Kia center cap right there, which makes it look more like a Formula One car, like where it has the center lug on it, really adding to the appeal and sportiness of the vehicle. As I said, I think with these wheels and tires in this design really make this pop because the simplistic part of how the styling is done and then really emphasizing on everything else. Coming back over here onto this side, you can still see that you do have more air vents. And once again, these are not just there for looks or for show, they serve a purpose. This is for aerodynamics and streamline for fuel mileage. You have a vent actually inside the wheel well, which will then be able to redirect air. And you can be able to see this body line that follows all the way through to the rear wheels. That's where it's gonna be able to force air down, streamlining the vehicle, giving you better fuel efficiency, but also adding a very, very sporty look. 
And among like a lot of the other cars we've seen in the Kia lineup, you do have folding mirrors, breakaway mirrors, so if someone hits it, you know, you can be able to minimize any damage. Then also turn signals in the side. We've talked about that as far as, you know, making sure that you're visible. So if you're in the fast lane, someone's in the slow lane, you want to merge into the middle lane, no matter what position you're in, you can be seen and people know your intentions. Coming down over here through the side, you can see this is where the GT really kind of comes into play, having this nice long swooping rear windshield, which goes out to the short trunk uh, deck lid, which is going to be indicative of what you'd see the GT cars of the past would be like. One thing I love is these integrated turn signals and taillights that start into the rear fenders and then continue all the way into the trunk lid and back over to the other side. Now, being a GT car, we said before, it has a, the trunk, it's not a traditional trunk. Let me go ahead and show you. It's more like a hatchback. Lift, release, bam. You have a complete center fold to where you can be able to lay down both seats. It's a 60-40 to be able to maximize any cargo space in here. But now you're just not limited to be able to have a trunk lid and then, you know, trying to slide everything else in there. You have full range to be able to get things in and out, but also maximize the amount of cargo space that you would have in the back. Love it. Now, of course, with safety features, you have all your rear anchors for your child safety seats into the back. So, you know, whether you have a rearward facing seat or a forward facing seat, any one of those three seating positions would be able to accommodate that. Now, you do also have a privacy cover that comes up on the top right here. So, if you do close the rear trunk lid, everything that you have is now out of view. Something like you would have on a traditional trunk, but still have all the storage space to go along with it. Now you do have your Kia Stinger logo right here in the nice chrome lettering and also the GT line as well. Now the GT line is all the dress up for the car. Really makes it pop, makes it go without all the rest of the performance stuff that you'd be able to get with like your GT1 or GT2 models. So I'm gonna say all the looks, all the efficiency, kind of the best of both worlds. Still a very fun car to be able to drive. And the one thing I love the back of this is the quad exhaust tips. So you can see how they integrated seamlessly into the back and the rear diffuser for the rear bumper. So not only does it add a nice aesthetic look to it, but also a very aggressive look as well. You'll be able to see that you have that nice glossy black lower portion of your rear bumper and then those chrome tips or the polish tips that come out with that really, really dress up the rear end of the car. Very distinctive, something that you only be able to see, like I say, on a handful of German imports, let's say like, you know, a BMW M3 or uh, AMG Mercedes be able to get on a car like this. So the sportiness aspect is definitely there. Coming along over here to the driver's side, once again, you still have this nice flow, just like I said, laid out perfectly. I love the lines. I love that pinched end that comes in with the rear of the vehicle. And now with this car, you do have, obviously, the intelligent key, the smart key fobs. And just like with the other Kias, this design. And I think it's just the coolest thing in the world. It is a leather wrapped key but you can be able to see that you have your lock button located right here up at the top, your unlock button, your trunk release, and then also a panic button as well. Now, I've always thought it looks like a detonator, which makes it kind of cool. So be able to walk up to your car just that easy, and it fits pretty well within your hand too. But you do have the keyless entry, so by simply keeping your key in your pocket, have a button on both the front doors, hit it once, you hear two chimes, now your vehicle's unlocked. Same way too, when you're walking away from your vehicle, go ahead and close the door, hit your button once, hear it charm once, all the doors are locked, security system is armed, be able to walk away. And it's a proximity, so you need to be about four feet. So if it's in your backpack or your gym bag, whatever it may be, as long as it's within arm's reach of the door, you can still be able to operate it. Now, we take a look at the interior. And this is where this car is really gonna come out and like I said, show you how it is a true driver's car. Everything from the leather upholstered seats, leather steering wheel, all the way up to all your soft material finishes on all your doors and the stitching through and through. They've done an amazing job making sure every little detail is where it needs to be and serves a function. So it's just not there for looks. Everything here does serve a purpose as well. You know, over on your driver door, you have your power windows, door locks, mirrors, you know, all your traditional stuff. One thing this vehicle does have, if you are going into a tighter parking spot, power folding side mirrors, so you can be able to have that set on an auto function, so when you lock your vehicle, the mirrors will automatically fold in, reducing any of the damage of you know, someone hitting it by accident. But then like if you're going back on the road or you're trying to be able to get into a tight parking spot, you can be able to hit the button, fold them in while the vehicle is still moving. 
Now the seating positions on this one are amazing. You have a 12-way power driver seat with four-way lumbar support system too. So no matter what size you are, whatever your seating position may be, you will find the best possible spot. Once again, showing the true driver car characteristics of it, not only for luxury parts, but then also for the, the sport feel of the vehicle too. So let's go ahead and dive on into the interior and show you the whole layout of the Stinger itself. All right, let's go ahead and climb on in. Let's get this guy started because it is South Texas and it is hot outside. One of my favorite things about these new cars. Like I said, I love that thud. Like I said, how solid the vehicle feels. And the very first thing you're gonna notice right off the bat is how everything is geared towards the driver. I love the way that these things are laid out from these air vents right here, which kind of, you know, to me, make it almost feel kind of like a fighter jet, you know, something that you'd see like in an airplane, which is, I think, very, very cool. But then, you know, do you have three of those in the center and then two on the outside for driver and passenger. But let's kind of dive into the gauge cluster first. So you still have your analog gauges, RPMs, uh, speedometer, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, pretty typical stuff, the things that you want to know about right off the bat. And then a center LCD screen too, so it'll be able to tell you your fuel range, outside temperature, how many miles are on the car, and of course, which gear your transmission's in. So not only be able to tell you drive, but if you're using your optional paddle shifters, be able to tell you exactly which gear that you have selected. Windshield wipers, turn signals, same place, same deal. They don't stick out past. We don't have to be able to talk about that. Go back to some of the other previous videos. We'll be able to show the advantages of that as well. And then, of course, all your layout for your steering wheel from your uh, Bluetooth hands-free phone system to voice commands and then stereo on the left-hand side and all your cruise control and then onboard computer controls are going to be on your right side. Big thing you want to talk, or at least be able to talk about on this steering wheel is A, you do have a leather wrap steering wheel which is nice and thick, thicker than a lot of the other vehicles that we've actually seen and that's to be able to give that good feeling, that hand feel while you're in a performance vehicle. But also notice this flat bottom. That's something that you see in Formula One cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and not only does it add to the appeal and the sportiness of the vehicle, but if you're a larger guy like myself too, it adds a little bit more room as far as getting in and out. Now the steering wheel is tilt and telescopic. So remember, you want to keep yourself comfortable in retrospect to the pedals so you can be able to adjust the steering wheel in or out compared to wherever your you know, most comfortable seating position would be. Now, if we come over here to the top, map lights, sunglass holders, pretty typical. Auto dimming rearview mirror, you do have a compass located in here. And then the home link controls, very simple, garage door clickers, gate clickers for a neighborhood or apartment complex or even programming you know, lights uh, through Homelink for your house. So if you want to drive up and have your exterior lights or interior lights turn on before you get into your house, you can be able to program those as well. Really makes for convenience, you know, especially you know, instead of having to fumble them through to be able to find a gate clicker or keeping them up here if you don't want anybody getting in and trying to be able to steal them or get into your house from that way. Now, you can see that your onboard computer and your display right here it is going to be slightly askew towards the driver, once again kind of giving that nice performance feel to where everything is driver oriented. Very easy to be able to read, very snappy system as well. So with this one you'll see that you have your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Uvo which is going to be like the Blue Link or OnStar, that's the Kia version of that as well. XM satellite radio, all your voice command list, and then be able to go through things such as your radio, satellite radio, or any other MP3s that you have plugged in and then all your setups for the car as well. Now down over here, real quick, off of the driver left knee, you'll be able to control all your lights for your dash as far as be able to dim those, be able to release your fuel door, but then also be able to turn off some of your safety features such as like the blind spot monitoring too. Now if we go through here through our pages, on our gauge cluster over here, you have a traditional digital display, which would be, uh, first one's gonna show is gonna be your speedometer, you also have one too for your tire pressure. All your other different assists that you would have for safety features, you can be able to go ahead and adjust through there as far as turning them on or off as well. So it makes being able to get to things very simple and very easy. If you can operate a smartphone, this is something you can definitely be able to do because it's simply selecting on a menu and then being able to go back and forth with OK or returning back. So couldn't get really any easier. Like we've talked about before on the other cars, especially like with this one I love, these nice aluminum finished buttons and everything's got a nice feel to it as far as 
hitting that it's not a little cheap piece of plastic it's got a nice feel to it a nice finish to it I think that really dresses up the car and yes yes we have knobs so a knob to be able to turn up the volume turn on and off the radio but also be able to seek and tune on this side now you can be able to flip through anything such as your apps phone any of your settings if you don't want to be able to use the touch screen you can be able to control it down here and then flip through your different media settings as well so if you're listening to apple carplay or a satellite radio or flipping between radio bands you can always be able to adjust it there or even bluetooth audio coming down here we do have the traditional uh, dual climate control so with this automatic once you set it it takes care of the fan speed where the air is going to maintain that temperature and then also passenger as well and you can see right up here on the display that's where all that's going to be going at so driver right now is set at 73 passenger set at 82 once you hit the auto button it'll go ahead and move the air where it's supposed to at the right speed to maintain those temperatures if you want to be able to go ahead and go back just where the driver had it simply hit the sync button everything returns back to where the driver had its settings very simple very easy to be uh, as far as easy to be able to get to as far as the layout so not having to be able to go over try to be able to find a million different buttons or find it through a screen just something that a lot of people would be used to now down in here let me move my sunglasses out of the way storage this panel does come closed you can see it has this nice beautiful black piano finish that runs the whole length of the console so once that closes up adds a nice little touch to it but you do have your 12 volt power outlet along with something you don't see a lot on other cars is your old auxiliary plug-in so if you have something like let's say you know a different sort of mp3 player or a different audio device you will plug in the old aux cord and usb and this vehicle is equipped with the wireless charging for your smartphone so simply just lay your phone right here and you can see it's a pretty deep little part for it so even like the larger iphones like i have like the iphone 11 plus fits in there without any problems whatsoever cup holders got two of them located right here and you do have a little bit of door storage on the side but you know be able to fit a water bottle down there it's not the biggest in the world but still be able to have a little bit of extra storage but everything from your larger Ozarka bottles to your coffee mugs and thermoses do you have additional storage on both the front doors and a little spot here to be able to hold a water bottle or a thermos but then your two larger cup holders up here and what I like about these is whether it's a smaller cup or a larger cup you have these little tabs on the side that do adjust so if you do have something a little bit larger or smaller not only will it be able to adjust to hold it but if it's a smaller cup you got to actually hold it in spots so if you're going around corners things like that you don't want your coffee spilling everywhere this is what's going to be able to keep it in place now the shifter i love you don't see anything kind of like that it's oh, the manly shifter you have your button located right here on the side so every movement that you do with this is going to be very deliberate which i like now remember that this is coupled to the eight speed automatic transmission which is great because those first four or five gears are going to be geared just towards acceleration, being able to get this vehicle up and moving. But then you have a couple extra overdrives for fuel economy as well, which really gives this car, like I said, stellar fuel mileage. Remember now that's connected to the four-cylinder turbocharged engine, which has 255 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque out of a four-cylinder. So trust me, with the transmission ratio and gears that it has, along with the engine power, this thing is no slouch just even for being a four cylinder. Now moving our way down the console, you do have your traction control button. So just in case you want to get a little squirrely in a parking lot or just have a little bit of fun on the country roads, you have that. And then you have your driving modes. So now you're gonna have five of them. You have a smart driving mode, which is gonna go ahead and take into account your driving patterns. You know, are you driving a little bit more aggressively? Are you driving a little bit slower? Does it want to be able to you know, help improve fuel economy or be more responsive with the transmission? Leave it in there, the car will sort everything out. From there you have eco mode, so things such as your throttle is going to be numbed down just a little bit, your transmission shifts are going to be a little bit softer, and of course you know they're going to be uh, determined to want to go up into a higher gear a little bit quicker for fuel mileage. And also other things too, like your air conditioner may be turned down just a little bit so it's not drawing so much power off the motor. Your comfort mode, which is going to put everything into it to where it's seamless, so very smooth transmission shifts, very smooth acceleration even from the feeling of the steering wheel is going to be nice and soft you can see we're at a park right now in park with one finger and my foot on the brake be able to turn the steering wheel so you can be able to see that comfort mode how easy it is to be able to maneuver this vehicle around next one from there is going to be sport sport puts everything on edge 
so your throttle is going to be much more responsive. Transmission shifts are going to be a little bit harder, but then also quicker as well. It's going to want to keep in those lower gears and the higher RPM so that turbo can really be able to build boost. Really just kind of heightens up all the senses of the vehicle. And then custom, so you can set different things. How do you want your transmission to be able to shift? How do you want your steering to feel? How do you want the acceleration to be able to react? So you can be able to kind of really put in your own tune of how you want the vehicle to drive at any given point in time. Seat heaters, so this one does have the ventilated seats or the perforated seats, but it, they aren't actively cooled. But you do have three levels of heated seats here. And I, like I said, I love these buttons because like, I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like something like set out of a cockpit of a fighter pilot. But three-way heated front seats for driver and passenger. And like I said, South Texas may not get a whole lot of use out of them, but if you said you've been driving for a long time, got a little bit of a back eight, or like I said, that month and a half we have winter down here in South Texas, really kind of comes in handy. And then also storage as well. Not the biggest storage compartment in the world, but storage all the same. You have a removable tray right there, so if you have coins, chapstick, anything that you want to be able to put in, or if it just gets a little bit dirty, you can be able to remove that. But still ample enough to be able to hold a small tablet, cell phones, chargers, anything like that that you may want to be carrying around with you. But all in all, like I said, I think you can really be able to tell that the way that this is set up is really, really driver oriented and to be able to give not only the feel of a sports car, but then it has everything else to back up, you know, the looks of it as well. Now, let's take a look at the back seat. Let's climb on in. Oh, I love that sound. Not too bad back here. It's a little tight, but that's once again going to be part of having a GT car. You know, the experience is not going to be riding in the back mean driven around. This is the car that you want to be driving. So obviously the most desirable spot to be in is the driver's seat. But still pretty good ample room back here. Do you have your different power outlets? So you have, of course, your USB charger, then of course the 12 volt. So whatever accessories that you may need to be able to run back here, you have both options to be able to do so. Rear AC vents, but the fun part about this is they're not tied up to the front. The rear passengers can actually be able to control their actual heat as well. So you have two zones in the front and then one in the rear too, which is nice. But the fan speed's going to be determined off of whatever the uh, front air conditioning is going. But that's a nice added touch as well. So if you got somebody picky in the back that wants a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer, they can be able to adjust it themselves as well. And keeping with these circular vents, like I said, I absolutely dig these. I think it's just a great design. Tons of storage, rear cargo nets. You do have this rear hump in the back and you see that that's not something you've seen on some of the other vehicles to review. And once again, it's because it's a rear wheel drive vehicle. So this is where your drive shaft's gonna be running to the front to the rear, which does make seating for five a little bit more difficult, but you know, four people fit very, very comfortably in here as well. Now, if we do pull down our center console, once again, this armrest lines up almost perfectly with where the door would be at. So very comfortable, very supportive, lots of room, lots of headspace as well. So even for a GT car with a sloping rear roof line, roof line, I fit back here very comfortably. Two cup holders right here, more door storage for another water bottle as well. All in all, comfortable. Three guys my size back here, not so much. But if you're going for a ride and you're sitting in the back seat, by no means is this a bad place to be but obviously you'd want to be in the driver's seat. But you know, I'd give this about an eight out of 10. Still very comfortable, still have the leather pointed seats as well, have your own air conditioning controls. Really kind of fits the bill of what you'd expect with a luxury sedan. Well guys, I think we covered a lot of the bases about what makes this GT Stinger a real GT car. You know, it's built off of the platform to be a performance sedan, rear wheel drive, and also the optional all wheel drive. The luxury features that were added to it, then of course all the standard safety features you get with the vehicle. And it really kind of sets itself apart into a segment that there's not a lot of cars out there. And the ones that it is kind of competing against are almost double or even triple the price. So if you're looking for a great driver's car with lots of utility and more importantly, fun to be able to drive, I don't think that there's another car out there that can match it dollar for dollar. And it's one thing to be able to talk about it, but more fun thing to do is actually go out there and drive it and be able to show y'all everything we talked about. So let's take it for a spin. The haters say they only love me for my stinger, but that can't be completely true. Obviously we can't do too much. 
too big of a test just right now because there is a little bit of traffic. I don't want to get too, too expensive to take it. Let's see as far as passing power. So we come back around here and we ease it. Oh yeah. Transmission downshifted almost immediately. Pulling in a longer gear. Oh yeah. Night and day difference between the two. You know, it felt like the car just wanted to keep pulling and pulling and pulling. Almost like it just wanted to be able to take everything it had out of that current gear. You know, it's something kind of uncommon, you know, something you wouldn't expect from a four-cylinder engine. Yes, it's turbocharged. Yes, we've driven a couple other four-cylinder engines that have been turbocharged as well, and they have adequate power. Let's put it that way. This is an adequate power. This is something you can be able to tell, you know, it's it's there to be able to have fun. So you have more than enough. You have what you need to be able to drive the car, but then obviously a lot more to be able to have fun with it as well. So let's talk about the paddle shifters too. So remember, we have it in sport mode, so the computer's taking care of everything as far as you know the transmission shifts, which gear it should be in, what's gonna be able to give you the best response. So if I just hit the gas right now, drops down to its lower gear, gives you that acceleration, builds the boost in the turbo for immediate acceleration. But you wanna have a little bit more control over it. The paddle shifters are attached to the steering wheel which I like, so no matter where you're at as far as turning it, you're not having to sit there and fumble or fight for it. It's gonna be right where your hands are at. So your left paddle's gonna downshift and right paddle's gonna upshift. So right now we're in drive and sport, which means we should be in eighth gear. First gear takes us down, I'm gonna downshift into fifth, then back down into fourth, and then it's gonna hold it there. So if I wanna be able to stay in there with an anticipation of accelerating, even the brakes too. The brakes are doing a phenomenal job. They're not touchy, they're responsive. So it, it takes a lot of the driver input and what you feel and really does a good job transmitting that to how the vehicle drives. You know, the, the big thing too with a lot of these newer cars and everything's electric assist, you know, you have a certain amount of disconnect to the vehicle you know, when it comes to the steering, you know, to the braking, you know, the transmission shifts. This is I think that does a really good job is of connecting the driver right back to it. Let's see, so we're slowing back down again. Hit the downshift button one more time. Oh yeah. So you can be able to see how it even did the rev match too to where it's going to be able to find out exactly where it's at so it's a seamless transmission shift whether you're going up or down. Very responsive. So let's try that again here. So we're in fourth gear, going to third. Oh yeah. That's a lot of fun. That's very impressive. And then get all the way back into eighth gear, which can give us our best fuel economy. That I like. That this car is a lot, and this is the smaller four-cylinder engine. I can only imagine what the 3.3-liter twin turbo charge V6 would be like in this car. That thing's got to be a monster. But I mean, even now, you know, when you're driven just about anything with you know, my length of career in the car business, that you know, if you can still put a smile on the face of a car guy, you know, they've done something right. My take on this car, you know, it's it's the first time I've ever really been able to get behind the wheel and be able to drive one and be able to check everything out. My take on this car right now is it's hitting a lot of the boxes for something that, you know, if you want a good driver's car, rear wheel drive sedan, something with style, something with flash, something with power, I mean, this is, is checking all the boxes of it. You know, the back seat comfort isn't the best, but once again, being a driver's car, being more of, you know, the coupe, as they would call it across the pond, you know, that's gonna be expected. But for the price point, for everything that you're getting in the style and design, you know, this is, this is a solid A, you know, and I say that because of just the fit and finish, the layout of how everything works, and just like I said, the way the doors close, they feel the buttons, how they, you know, they feel when you press them. It's like I said, it's almost gratifying, and you know, there's just there's more than enough power to do whatever you would think that you would need to be able to do in a vehicle legally. But even in the stop and go traffic, you know, this car is still a joy to drive. I could see myself driving to New Orleans in this vehicle and being just as refreshed and having just as much fun 
as I would be just driving across town to work. So my honest take on this car is they've done a great job making a true GT vehicle. And it's something you don't see a lot out on the road nowadays. But since we are in stop and go traffic, we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. You know, once again, my name is John Sievers over here with Wool Car Kia. You know, stay tuned because we have videos coming out all the time. So we're gonna be reviewing a couple more SUVs here in the near future. If you got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the subscription box below. We do like to be able to read through them and you know try to be able to answer as many as possible. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you hit that little bell off to the side every time we put out a new video, you'll be notified about it as well. Once again, my name's John Sievers, Wool Car Kia here in San Antonio. This is Roadside Reviews. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.